Hey guys, let's see, bringing you another video and a welcome to a Huzzy Q&A. Not done one of these in actually probably two, maybe even three months. Used to do them semi-often, um, but they're really fun to do. So I will say this one is actually being streamed. Um, I normally don't stream Q&As, but I'm actually doing an evening stream today. And, you know, I don't want to play ranked. LEC is currently on, so I don't want to play ranked during that. So we are doing here a um, Q&A live if you've got any questions on the you know watching the video um feel free to leave them in the comments and i'll try to type some answers and be interactive in the comments there should be youtube or gameplay on the screen uh, accompanying this video but as always just to, to make the reminder if it's not being uploaded as a commentary that means it probably isn't the best of footage um so yeah so the first question is from Lock Goom that says, and you know, most of these are probably going to be about video games and League or Riot stuff, but there'll probably be occasionally little other things too. What got what game got me into gaming? Um, it's hard to really nail down what I first played, but I know my first, I think, personal gaming experience that wasn't at a friend's house or anything like that, I think was a Game Boy maybe even maybe a game boy color but i yeah i had a game boy i might even have the original game boy as well but yeah game boys definitely were maybe my first experience i did have a playstation one also so it's hard to say specifically what game it specifically was i know you know crash bandicoot are some of my early memories croc was an early memory i think it was called croc on playstation um obviously pokemon i have a really really weird memory of playing pokemon i think i actually weirdly had pokemon blue i know people like husband wouldn't you had pokemon red charizard when it was a brand new game i didn't know Char charizard was my favorite um but yeah pokemon blue is what i had and i remember being in hospital when i was young i wasn't ill i was visiting someone in hospital but i was allowed to bring my game boy and i remember evolving my blastoise because i picked squirtle for my first ever pokemon I remember I literally got my first ever Blastoise while I was in hospital visiting somebody. I actually do not remember who I was visiting, but that's a really early memory in my life. Um, so yeah. So I don't know what specific game it is, but yeah, my it was Game Boy, Game Boy Color, PlayStation 1, very classic 90s games, all the games you'd probably expect I played, Spyro, stuff like that. Um... Would I consider playing other Riot games, aka Valorant or Legends of Rune Terror or stuff like that? Um, I have played, obviously, most of the games that Riot's done um, to a certain extent. You know, I've tested some of them before they've come out. I did play a couple since they've come out. Ultimately, I, I, if any of the current lineup, which one would I be most likely or more likely to play? It would be Valorant, but obviously they built Valorant with voice comms in mind, and the game is balanced around voice comms from the beginning. I don't want to use voice comms when I'm playing as a solo, um, so it does put me off because I'd be, you know, I'm a competitive player. I would play ranked. I'd want to get higher rating, and that in the game the frame that they've made involves voice chat and that just puts me off i am gonna give the fighting game a go when that comes out what i think it's called project l in development um of me recording this i think i'm technically allowed to say um i was given an early copper copy of mage seeker um the up the, the, the game that's coming out with silas I, I i have been given an early copy for that um so riot actually does give me access to the games which is really nice um and yeah maybe i need to like record a stream or video with other games every now and then uh the booper of noses brilliant name two months of prime thank you so much so yeah I, I could see myself giving a go to any new game that riot comes out just would i make active content about it all the time it's hard to say but i will give the fighting game a go i will say that um next up is when you started being a content creator uh, how long did it take you to get a consistent viewership honestly it wasn't very long because i got quite lucky and that is i would say a key theme for anybody that's made it big as a content creator and you know i've never made it big big but i've made it enough to do my be my job for now nearing 10 years um so you know you could say you know i made it in that respect i you know you and this thing you can't do this anymore so the way that i did it you cannot do 
because they really clamped down on it but that was the way you kind of climbed back then was not many people were making leak content so the people that made leak content we all kind of got promoted off like reddit and like certain reddits so i actually gained my initial audience through reddit and then it kind of blew up from there um hilariously i actually had a meeting just now about you know I've, I've kind of spoken to you guys about potentially getting a youtube manager who is a lot better with thumbnails and titles that i am i will say we, we are going to give that a go it's going to start in the next few weeks maybe in, in like a month's time or so um and i even said at that meeting you know the, the time that my channel grew like actually grew on youtube was before we actually got into the fun and games of titling well my channel grew when titles were Oriana mid gameplay league of legends that was the title there, there was no you know clickbait or there was no flashiness of titles M my channel grew is when that's what it was and i've always been bad in you know titling so that is where we are going to give it a trial with this youtube manager um who is clearly better than i because i'm actually going to be his 10th channel he's going he's managing and some of the channels under his belt are pretty good i will tell you guys more about it when it's kind of set in stone but i've got a little bit of confidence and obviously the the biggest thing i will say that that will change with the youtube channel he's happy with the content that we're making he doesn't want me to change the content he doesn't want me to change two videos a day he's completely fine with that the titles are going to change and the thumbnails are going to change but the actual content is going to stay the same so if you've been watching my stuff for years and you like the content well that's not changing the idea is to try and with titles and thumbnails get new people to click new people to join the community as it were and that will obviously give me job security obviously some people are like oh it's going to be through clickbait not really the idea obviously with clickbait actual clickbait is you're selling something that isn't in the video i will never agree to that the title has to be relevant to the video and the if the title is asking a question the video should be answering that question so obviously i do have certain you know things that i limit and that is one and he was completely fine with that um do do, do did i ever play rts games i did play starcraft 2 when it first came out but nothing major what's the champion you love playing but you are worst at um I, I do have a, a base feeling of like if i ever played a champion a lot i potentially would be okay at, at it eventually but i would say a champion that i've never fully committed time into would probably be azir hello puppy dog um so yeah i've never put a lot of time into azir so probably if i had to answer that question it would be azir um so yeah that's what i would say um next question is do, 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 do. where am i i've lost actually where i am um here i am what's the biggest misunderstanding about streaming oh um that's an interesting question there's different ways that i could answer this but the way that i will answer it is a lot of people who start streaming no matter what you do you are a lot of people and this is a stereotype we're starting streaming because we might not be the most confident or the most social person in the outer world so we start streaming online and then if you're any semi-successful you start getting an audience and we're not trained to have an audience we're not trained in that way like it sounds weird but a, an actor they get lessons of how to deal with attention and how to deal with any type of attention online or social media they get official training for that content creators don't you just kind of are like you do it if it goes well you're like oh god i've got an audience now and then you just are supposed to be okay the internet is a tough place and it sometimes has been hard to be just be like oh i'm okay because we don't have that official training we don't have those official coping mechanisms or background help that other channels do but yeah that's what i would say potentially it's it's you know it's kind of the realization that you know the content creator that you watch is literally just a normal person that is just making it up as they go you know they, we're nothing special in that way um arthur man says how did i deal with family members and friends questions and reactions when i started content honestly like 
you know, it depends obviously your, your circles and who, who, you know, your, um, support, I guess, network. But for me, it was actually quite nice. Like I didn't have anybody just absolutely laugh at my face. Um, you know, you have to remember at the time I was not in a very good place anyway, mentally. So just the fact that I was trying to do something, I think for my family, at least they were like, oh, he's trying to do something because I wasn't at the time, you know, I, I was in a gap year between sixth form and uni. I was in a very dark place. So I think eventually when I told them I'm doing this and hey, I got a hundred views on a video. I think they just kind of thought, oh, at least he's doing something. At least he's giving something a go because for a little while, I think I kind of did give up. So I think it was a nice thing. And then as for my friends, you know, the friends that I still have to this day, again, you know, my friend group is a very, um, let's say banter filled friend group that we do gripe each other a lot. But even those guys didn't even laugh in my face. They didn't make jokes about it. They were actually pretty encouraging. So it just shows like the quality of people that I do have. They're really nice people. And that obviously is very important. Um, next up from name given is will I do tutorials guides sometime soon TM um, question mark I'd like to again I still I do need to make and obviously I, I've kind of stopped playing the champion and I have been thinking I need to play a more again Anivia I know at my absolute peak my Anivia is really good and I, I do want to potentially start making guides again because we used to make guides years ago like video guides so I would say, and the only thing I'm going to commit to, because this is quite a large commitment, is I will make an Anivia guide video this year. So it's 2023, April, April 2023. This year I will make a Anivia guide video. And obviously with the help of the YouTube manager, maybe we can make it a bit more flashy because he does have editors that we can kind of sub hire. Um maybe we'll make it a bit flashy and actually really try to make a really good Anivia guide video. Maybe that'll be the plan. So yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Where are we? Um, do, 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 do. Um, how many champions would I say a player should start off with? Realistically, and some people will be like, huh? realistically, when you're absolutely brand new to the game, start with one for the first few games just to get the absolute basics of the game, like movement and stuff like that. And then slowly start just to play a different champion each time. And the way that I've always described it is, you know, it's kind of learning by being a slight one trick to get the basics. And then when you've got the basics, expand out. But it's it's where I've always said, like, I would never stop and just be a one trick, especially if you're new to the game, because so many people who do that, I imagine, have not found the champion that they're actually the best with, if that makes sense. Like, if you start playing League and you play, you've played five champions and you've landed on Cassiopeia random, but you landed on Cassiopeia on your fifth ever played champion, you're like, oh, I'm going to one trick this, and you forever are stuck in silver what what happens if the next champion you might have tried was actually a better champion for you or in 20 champions time that champion was actually your best champion mechanically if you stop and you only have played five champions you'll never actually know what your best champion is it's just a, an interesting thought experiment to me so that's what i would say is you know, yeah, pick up the game and, you know, just by pure ownership, you're not going to own all the champions. Although, obviously, if you've got Xbox Game Pass, you can link your account and get access to all champions now. Um, yeah, I would I would play, pick a role at the beginning, play a few champions in that role, maybe even then just go play a different role, a few champions in that game, and just kind of see what is kind of your vibe, is what I would say. Um, Miss Mink says, when picking a champ pool, would you recommend picking champs you think you're best at? Or champs that you have the most fun on i think a hybrid of the both is the best situation in the end of the day league of legends is a video game so if you're not having fun what's the point and i would actually wager you know that those two categories champs um you think you're best at and champs you have most fun with usually they go hand in hand usually not always because like maybe you're an amazing master e player because he's quite basic, but obviously 
he's a bit boring so you might not have fun but usually your best champion and what you have most fun with they kind of mesh is what i would say with having a youtube manager will i have more free time to do non-league game reviews potentially um so the way that it's going to ultimately work is in the initial we're going to have a trial of one to three months to see how it goes he at the right of the beginning for maybe like the first month i upload two videos a day every day that's not going to change and i know some people will be happy about that he's going to kind of take one video i'm going to do the other video and then we've got like an easy comparison if his you know if the videos he has control over are instantly doing better or in a week's time they do better it's like well clearly that's the way to go let's do this properly um but i basically am still going to do all the editing which obviously there's not a lot of editing in my videos i still do the editing i still upload the videos but that's it um for his videos that he has control over he sorts out the thumbnail he titles the video he sorts out the description the tags all that stuff that does take out you know that does take a considerable amount of time for me to do because when i had the meeting earlier it was like okay so what what who does everything on your channel i was like i do and he's like okay so but like what about your editor i was like i don't have an editor what about your thumbnail maker i don't have a thumbnail maker he's like wait you do everything he's and i was like yeah he's like oh that's really rare by the way for any youtuber to do everything but i do so it instantly yes will give me free time um and any free time is going to be nice just to have i arguably will try to probably stream more when i've got more free time but i'm also not opposed to trying to do what i used to do back in the day called huzzy one shots those will most likely not be uploaded to my main channel they'll probably be on huzzy extra but yeah maybe we could bring those back um let's see what else we got what's my favorite part of league of legends wait what's my favorite part of league or favorite things oh the gameplay like the gameplay is still what draws me to play the game all the time um the actual gameplay is my favorite mechanical game like it just is when you play well on league and you know you're playing well there's not many games that have that sense of achievement to me i would say fps games have a very similar feel because like when you're playing league and let's just give a champion as an example if you're playing ezreal and you play it well and you're hitting all your skill shots you're dodging people with your e you cross map someone with your ulti so satisfying not many game genres or games in, in general to me have that level of satisfaction fbf fps games are close because if you're like headshot that person headshot that person headshot that person and you survive like a round in csgo or something that's very satisfying but that's what i would say is the actual gameplay to me is incredibly satisfying when you're doing well uh would i consider playing other games such as elden ring or hogwarts legacy i mean i did stream a bit of hogwarts legacy and i actually was talking um to my chat about that earlier i've randomly just stopped playing it even though i was really enjoying it um i don't know why i stopped playing it i need to finish the story so i might start playing that again now that we're in the office obviously i'm in the office now and queen bleb is in the corner and little missy is down on the floor in a bed we are in this room a lot more um that does give me more time just to play games so maybe i'll pick that back up and finish the story i don't know um deku says have i thought about picking up a zir yes it is something that i have really considered uh, i i will probably be up um recording one or two challenges spectates as i will say when you guys are watching this next week i'm actually going away for four days uh, me and queen player are having a bit of a a little bit of a break just to kind of recharge a little bit but also celebrate that obviously our little puppy has let's say made it through absolute puppyhood she hasn't bitten us now for over a week and that's a really big thing and it's a thing to celebrate in my opinion because it, it has been quite hard um so after i get back from the break um i think we kind of you know this week upcoming i'm obviously going to be recording the whole week you know i'm going to try and climb and everything but i think when i get back from the break is really when i want to put the foot down really start to try harder again let's really try and get master because it's been a bit rough recently maybe pick up a new champion or two um i'm going to start doing evening streams properly again now that it's more manageable with our little puppy so 
things are going to be a bit different when I get back, but in a really good way. So that's what I would say. So potentially, I will pick up Azir. What's my favorite ability in League of Legends? Ooh, that's a hard question. I've got quite a few. It depends, again, the, the category. You know, as a really stupid ability, just Karthus Ultimate is very satisfying as a favorite ability because, like, you just press R and could end up with a triple kill or something. You could end up with a pentakill in theory. But, yeah. Uh, Ruberis, thank you so much for the 32 months tier one. Appreciate it, my dude. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's hard for me just to say, in, like, one ability, that like, boom, that's my favorite right now, though, I would say. I do quite like Gangplank. A few of Gangplank's abilities, I would say. Yeah, his barrels are cool, his Q's cool, his ult's cool. So, I don't know. Um, Ricky says, everyone focuses on patch to patch, but from beginning to now, do I like how League has grown? Ooh, that's a question. The honest answer is yes, and I know some people might be a bit like, really? Yeah. When League was new, you know, I've played since the beginning. It wasn't an amazing game, believe it or not, at the beginning. It, it wasn't. Um, it was. It already felt old, even in season one, um, because you have to imagine they were making a parody, if you will, of a game that was already a mod of a different game. Because, yeah, like, so the answer is yes. I do like how League has turned out ten years later. Um. Obviously, the genre of MOBAs isn't massive anymore. It, it just isn't. Um, but no, I do I do like the direction that League has gone overall. Um, yes, there would be little things that I would change, but the actual game itself, it's, it's a pretty good game. You know, it is. Uh, Mira says, in my opinion, what is my biggest gripe with League at the moment? Um, obviously, you would probably have a few. Uh, um biggest one and this again is just a personal answer i feel that some champions have a bit bit too much personal protection when it comes to balance now some champions get any little bit of strength and they instantly get nerfed down some champions have been strong for a long time and they're just left so that's what i would say it's 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 like a personal bias that some champions have that it just doesn't feel great if you don't play those champions if you play those champions it's probably amazing because your champion's always strong but yeah mr nim says if i could have the same sub number uh, and viewers etc um in any different game which game would it be i don't think i'd pick an individual game if i could just answer this question completely open and honest i think i'd go if I could have the same viewership, same income, everything is exactly the same, but I could do anything I want, I'd just go variety. That's the ultimate dream for any gaming content creator, I think, is just you play what you want and your audience turns up. Obviously, I think the biggest example on Twitch, or one of, to me at least, is Lyric. He's one of the biggest streamers. Audience loves him playing different games. He has some, obviously, big games that he always will go back to, but his audience will turn up and... That is just insane to me. So yeah. Herlum is what removed item or eventually reworked reworked item do I miss most? It's the same answer I've always given. A Deathfire Grasp, 100%. It's, a, it's an item that you used and then that would increase, I think, your burst for the next few seconds. They got rid of it because only 1%, the Riot said it themselves, only 1% of people use the active on the item. Um, and also, Abolo, 25 months tier 1, says, Fuel's nice to catch a good late night stream. Hell yeah, dude. Appreciate it massively. Um, Every just says, Miss the Warzone content. Yeah, potentially. Like, I'm going to be honest. When Warzone 2 was coming out, I, I based in my mind, I was like, I'm actually going to try and properly make Warzone 2 content, turn the second channel into a Warzone 2 channel, and maybe grow that. And then, unfortunately, two things. One... I didn't like Warzone 2 gameplay. And two, Warzone 2 is just bad. So it kind of is linked. But yeah, so uh, unfortunately, Warzone 2 has been received quite poorly. And that kind of just made me... I don't even play it. That's the thing. Like, it isn't just like, oh, I'm, I play it a bit and I'm not making content. I'm not even playing Warzone at all. So, yeah. Um, Tris Callon uh, says, do I still talk to Fi? 
very occasionally, very occasionally. We'll maybe drop each other a message a few times a year just to see how we're doing. Um, but yeah, um, I know he's doing well in life. I, I will say that for those that used to watch Fi, I know some of you, are, you know, have expressed even to me that it was a bit sad that he just kind of disappeared um, over time. And Ricky the Rainfrog with seven gifted subs. Thank you so much, Ricky. That's very kind, man. Um, so yeah, the, the reason why Fi kind of stopped being a content creator, and I've, I've told this before, it's not a secret, is like I said earlier about being a content creator, there's the, the, the stresses that come with it that a lot of people don't believe are stresses in, in some ways. To do it consistently, to continue pumping out content, especially if you grow out of love with the game, and I do think Fi did grow out of love with the game a bit. You know, he was a really good, really good player in his peak. Very good AD carry player. But to then continue to make content of a game that you're actually not really enjoying in the end is hard. You know, I know for the, like the last six to six months to a year of his content, he mainly was just making tier lists and, and just lists, not even gameplay, because that meant he didn't have to play the game as much. Um, so ultimately, you know, it does make sense for some people just to step back from it um so yeah i don't know what's happened by the way sorry about the gifted sub noise it should just play one message when someone gifts a bunch of subs and that's it it's weirdly doing them all individually now and i don't know why but yeah um it's odd but it's the, it's the way it's gone um we'll answer a few more and then um I'll, I'll end on a topic that i have had some questions and that is about puppy stuff so i will end with a question about puppy um is what i will say so do 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 where are we i need to find that's the fi stuff um why did ryan why did Riot make all these super strong mythic items but never brought back death fight and then that's the sound it should do in the beginning um i don't know so what i would say mythic items i know for the vast majority of the player base are still not liked to this day all i will say is i wouldn't be and i i've got no insider knowledge so this is just speculation i would not be crazy surprised if they get rid of mythics i, I wouldn't because mythics actually I, in my opinion make the game harder to balance because you're having to balance around these insanely strong items continuously if you just made all the items again like it used to be just legendary items that don't have so much strength difference i think it'd be just easier to balance the game and when you're continuously growing the roster of champions to then have these strong items that every now and then one of the new champions is going to absolutely excel with a mythic item especially i think it just makes it unnecessarily hard so we'll see if they stick around in the next one or two years. French Folk says, what's my favorite anime and why? Um, I've got a few. Um, my, my absolute favorite, if I had to say, and I know it's probably a cliche, is probably My Hero Academia. That, that anime just made me smile. It's made me feel emotion probably more than most others. And the actual just look of it, the actual fight scenes and stuff are just insane. And I've always said, you might not be an anime fan, you might not like anime, but if you like Marvel films, like superhero DC Marvel films, you'll probably enjoy My Hero Academia. That's the thing. It's very easy to get into that, um, is what I would say. So, yeah. But obviously, I do like Hunter Hunter. I do like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I do like a bunch of that stuff. Um, I've, I've watched a decent... I've, I'm watching less nowadays, but yeah. Um, Xtech Jinx R says, how do I make more friends to play with online? Um, I would say, obviously, you know, you're part of our community. So joining communities is probably a big thing. So get friendly in a community, be a nice member of the community. And genuinely in our community, I'm not just, just trying to promote my one, but people have become really good friends in my community. I know people have met each other in real life when they first met here in the Huzzy Games community. So communities are a great thing. And communities can mean anything. Like if you like a certain champion, every single champion has got their own community. 
and you'll probably find if you like a champion there's like-minded people that already in, or also enjoy that champion so maybe join that champion's reddit or join their discord and obviously the big thing is you do need to try and be social um philly dozer 15 months tier one says what's your favorite league of legends character really hard for me to answer that individually like gangplank is definitely there and nivea is definitely there i don't think i've got a singular lee sin is definitely there i've got quite a few but yeah good question thank you very much for the 15 months so that's what i say is potentially join a community but then you have to do the social aspect you can't just join a, a community and that's it things need to happen with it mr july 20 months with primes as was just watching the cogmore and made it me remember i haven't stopped by to use my prime in a while oh thanks dude 20 months with prime also um what else have we got okay that might be it um do we have any others apart from puppy stuff because okay yeah, a couple people have um asked puppy things and i'm, I'm waiting till the end of that hey ambery um chris Carl as Callon says your wife is trying to get me into pokemon do i have any tips honestly it's just a really fun rpg i think you'll enjoy it if you actually just kind of put your mind into enjoying it to be honest i think it is a really fun game um treat it as an actual rpg because that is what it is so yeah all right and then the final thing is a question that i've actually had quite a lot over the last couple months realistically and that is more puppy stuff so if, you, if you're not here for the puppy question thank you very much for watching we've been going over half an hour but i'll just answer the final thing and obviously is like how has it been having a puppy and what i would say is the beginning stage at least for me was very very hard um from never owning a dog to then being thrown in the deep end with a puppy i struggled an insane amount i really did and you know i've not had i would say the strongest mental health or strength in the last couple of years anyway with some things happening but it was really hard but with help from friends and family and stuff like that we got through it um you know obviously little miss maya went to go stay at queen pleb's family for a few weeks um i think it technically was six or eight weeks um and that did help because i could go visit on the weekends get more used to her and then we kind of got her back and she's when we got her back she's now been here permanently so she's been here for over four months permanently and it's been hard you know and that's the thing i do want to make clear is i don't know it might be happening more but i think for a long time because i never really heard about it a lot of people don't like to say anything negative about having a puppy or a dog at all because it is overall a magical experience and it's lovely and i love her so much but it was really tough and the biting and obviously each dog is different um vizslas are known to be a little bit bitey that's her breed and even within that category some vizslas are more bitey than others i think she was on the more bitey end even for a vizsla and we're talking in just the last week we have finally gotten out of that phase um and it's been magical and it's been amazing and it has finally let me just enjoy having a dog completely because the way that I would describe it before what's happened and her stopping biting is it kind of felt like I had bad uh, bad vision. You know, when you've got bad vision and you need glasses, your vision is all blurry and you can't really see the full picture. That is the way that I would describe my dog owning experience before this last week is I knew what was there. The outlines was there, but it was just a bit blurry. I knew I loved her. I knew I'd really enjoy it but I didn't have the glasses. I didn't have the complete vision yet. But in the last week of her just stopping biting, because it was constant, you'd be giving her a stroke, bite, playing with a toy, bite, picking her up to do something, bite. Anything would result into a bite. And she's now stopped that basically completely. It's a different experience. I now can see the picture of, I love this little puppy with all my heart. And I actually now can really enjoy it for what it is and it's magical so would i ever get a puppy from the beginning again i'm not sure um but would i ever you know we're gonna have her for hopefully 15 years and i now i can't wait she's great and i've always wanted a dog my whole life and i finally have got one so it's something i now can fully enjoy 
that's the way that i would describe it and i'm completely fine with being open and honest about it being hard because it does seem a lot of places or a lot of people in the past haven't been fully honest it's been really hard and anybody that we've spoken to friends family etc when you actually get into the proper honesty about it people have really gone oh yeah no it was really hard and maybe people should be a bit more open about it but we're there so yeah and uh, as a really dumb question, Hexec Jinx at the end is like, who would win in the arm wrestle wrestling competition between me or Maya? I think me. Uh, but what I'll try and do with the risk of uh, this going badly. Let's see how this goes. Maya. Hi, Maya. Girlie, come here. Come here. Come here, pup. Come here, pup. All right, up, up. Come here, up, up. Up, up. She's really tired right now, by the way. Come here. Up, up. <laughs> I know you're tired. She just lied down. Up, up. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. All right. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> it's fine. Come here. <laughs> I could just move the camera. That might be the smarter decision. Good thinking. Um, right. We'll do it that way. That is probably the better way of doing it. Um, hello. <laughs> there you go. Good girl. My touch, touch. She's got the treat, so she's now going to listen. She's not going to listen, but there she is. Good girl. I've not got any more treats. You can go back to chilling if you want. Is that a camera? Is that you? Oh, thank you. She just gave me a paw. <laughs> But there we go. That's the end. Oh, th oh, thank you. She keeps giving me her paw. <laughs> oh, Missy. Good girl. Touch. Oh, good girl. Touch. Good girl. You can get one more. You can get one more. But there we go. There you go. Right, off you go. Go on, in your bed. But anyway, that is going to be it, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching the Q&A. And, uh... Yeah, so oh, you make me very happy. You're a good girl. Yeah, you are. Anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this Q&A, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory.